Hello there, it's Andrew Demeter here reporting on behalf of Press for Truth, and today I'll be voicing my thoughts in regard to a highly controversial matter facing our nation, referred to as the National Defense Authorization Act. The Fifth Amendment under the Constitution of the United States of America says that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. However, on December 31st, 2011, with the mere stroke of his pen, President Barack Obama signed the most draconian assault against American civil liberties, the NDAA. Not only does this National Defense Authorization Act violate the first, fourth, and fifth constitutional amendments, but it permits the military to indefinitely detain suspected terrorists, including U.S. citizens under Section 1021, in both times of war and peace. While the inconspicuously placed indefinite detention clause targets individuals who were, quote, a part of or substantially supported Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, or associated forces that are engaged in hostilities against the United States, it leaves gray area for one's imagination to define who these vague associated forces exactly are. Are these belligerents resistors of governmental dogma, or possibly associated forces are Pakistani Americans with dual citizenship? Maybe even journalists traveling abroad or independent journalists exercising their First Amendment rights, in which case their freedom of speech and expression would be denied. These criminal and domestic scholars, immigrants, and journalists may then be declared as enemy combatants and exiled to Guantanamo Bay, which Obama pledged to close during his campaign, by the way, without the writ of habeas corpus. Then again, if Obama has the audacity to domestically and foreignly institute drone strikes on alleged terrorists such as Anwar al awlaki why would he even bother upholding militarized indefinite detention provisions such as the NDAA? Has our republic lost faith of its judicial structure to the degree of rendering due process of law as an afterthought? Or does the military work in cahoots with the NSA to execute Bush's deceptively dubbed Patriot Act? wherein unwarranted wiretapping and espionage could formulate a probable cause to detain a victim. You know how congressional representatives swear an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution? Oh, you do? Then please enlighten me as to how three-fourths of the legislative body of our country managed to vote in favor of such a deliberate infringement upon the document that they submissively swore to. We surely live within a republic where the power lies within us, the people. This NDAA legislation is a blatant opposition to the principles that the US was constructed upon and endorses a repulsive, authoritarian Soviet gulag mentality. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jews were rounded up by the Nazis and indefinitely detained during the Holocaust. Do not submit yourself to the Pavlovian systematic conditioning of becoming a subjected scapegoat because you don't conform to authority like a mindless sheep. Let's keep everything in perspective though. Obama promised, quote, not to authorize indefinite detention without the trial of American citizens. Because, of course, he wouldn't redact this promise like his countless others, because the 2013 variant of the NDAA still includes this unconstitutional and ominous clause of indefinite detention, and I'm sure the Founding Fathers are rolling over in their graves. Friends, we are staring into the eyes of an eminent, fascist police state, and if we don't rise up, we will be seized, and there will be no knock. In liberty and vigilance, friends, Andrew Demeter on behalf of Press for Truth, signing out.